Good afternoon and welcome everybody here in the room and also on our live stream, our global audience on the live stream. Welcome for joining us here for this press conference from the 47th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum 2017 here in snowy Davos. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, we've heard from the president of China this morning and we're very excited to hear from another head of state uh, today here on the, on the panel. Um, welcome, um, and I may say welcome back, uh, Mr. Prime Minister. Um, to you watching, let me quickly introduce the panel to you. Uh, we're joined by the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, Rani Wickremesinghe. Welcome, sir. We're joined by Ravi Karu Nana Yake, the Finance Minister of Sri Lanka. I hope I pronounced that, yes. that right. Thank you. Uh, we're also joined by Harin Fernando, who is the Minister for Telecommunications and Digital Infrastructure. And um, we're also joined uh, by the Minister of Development, Strategies and International Trade of Sri Lanka, Mr. Malik Samara Vikrama. Welcome uh, to all of you. Um, huh. Prime Minister, without further ado, um, we spoke last year here and you presented uh, an update to, uh, to the world on Sri Lanka. Um, since last year, um, what can you share with us today? Thank you. What I'd like to say is following up on what was said in the morning, Asia is moving towards further economic integration. <laughs> and it is more so in South Asia and the Indian Ocean, which is one of the least economically integrated uh, areas. In that respect, many of the Asian countries have put forward their proposals, policies, sometimes complementary to each other, sometimes in competition with each other, but the objectives have not not change. In this respect, Sri Lanka itself is making its contribution by making Sri Lanka the hub of the Indian Ocean. Because with the hub a concept of a logistic and a business hub, then integration becomes certainly uh, more viable. What we have done as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, first is we are to negotiate, we started the negotiations and now to come, we are in the process by mid this year to complete the negotiations for market to entry. Firstly, uh, to the si single market, the GSP plus facility which gives concessions to Sri Lankan goods and services have been approved in principle by the EU and the uh, customary two months period, uh, after the two months period, the announcement will be made as to the date on which Sri Lankan goods can enter the single market. On the Asian side, we are now dealing and negotiating firstly with India, our neighbor with whom we have a free trade agreement for a further comprehensive and a uh, deeper trade agreement, the economic and technology cooperation agreement uh, with India. Within it, we also envisage that it will be possible for us to have separate arrangements with the five southern states of India. That will be Andhra, Telangana, Kantaka, Tamil Nadu, and uh, Kerala, which together with Sri Lanka is a $500 billion econ regional economy and has the prospects of even going up to a trillion dollars. We are also uh, having uh, negotiations with Singapore and we'll complete that soon and FTA with Singapore. FTA there with Singapore and the economic and technological agreement with uh, cooperation agreement with India will also enable us for further agreements of the Bay of Bengal countries, firstly uh, Bangladesh, and then the other countries such as Malaysia, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, Myanmar. The one op option may be to have a, a agreement with the whole of the ASEAN rather than to negotiate with the individual countries. Then we are also negotiating a free trade agreement with China. With that, the, the three of the, of the four largest markets in the world, three of them will be uh, within the reach of Sri Lanka and market penetration. Sri Lankan products will be able to, and services, Sri Lankan products and services will penetrate these markets. We will also be talking with Japan on FTA with Japan. That's the first round of FTAs. 
that we will be uh, conducting together with a deep uh, further FTA agreement with uh, Pakistan. Together with this, Sri Lanka government is now doing, also undertaking the structural reforms which will be announced in February and March, which will make it easier to do business in Sri Lanka for new tax incentives. The macroeconomic stabilization program with IMF has been agreed to. And in that, we are looking on infrastructure development for what's called the uh, Southwest Corridor, a development area starting in Kandy, going through Colombo, and ending up in Hambantota. There will be two airports, there will be two harbors, and with the industrialization of Hambantota about and Ruhuna to take place with the new developments on the harbor and the airport, we'll be having the industrial economy, the bulk of the industrial economy will be in that, uh, in that corridor with further industrialization being pushed to the north of Colombo into the mm, northwestern province. Similarly, a second area of development will be the Northeastern Economic Development Corridor around Trincomalee, where the Trincomalee Harbour will be developed. We, are, we have a contract with uh, Sabana Jorong of uh, Singapore for the planning out of Trincomalee. We are talking with India to come into the development of the Trincomalee uh, port. We also we talk with Japan and Singapore on their involvement for the development of Singapore port, together with the development of the interior the for the agriculture, which has already started in, which has already started in part of uh, the areas under the direction of President Maitripala Sirisena. We, we, we are looking, we will, we are also initiating work on the financial city uh, as an offshore center for South Asia, We'll be um, focusing on manufacturing, on uh, the digital economy, on tourism. There will also be the modernization of agriculture starting with the plantation crops. So this are, these are the first steps that have been taken and when the process initiating. By end of 2017, the plan will be in place and will be operational. The laws will be in place and the, the strategy that we mapped out last year will come into play and Sri Lanka will make its own contribution to further integration of trade in the Asian sector as far as we are concerned, especially in the Indian Ocean and the South Asian sector. Thank you, Prime Minister, uh, for sharing this update. Uh, with us from from last year, and also for uh, uh, briefing us on the yeah. uh, on the role of Sri Lanka as the, the hub in the Indian yeah. Ocean, um, uh, Minister Samara Vikrama, um, the Prime Minister m uh, hinted to it uh, of the importance of trade. Um, as Trade Minister, um, can you can you elaborate a little bit more how this uh, will play out? Yes, <coughs> as the Prime Minister mentioned, that we have made good progress with the uh, our negotiations with uh, China, Singapore, and India. We hope to finalize uh, the these trade agreements before June this year, which will result in, in us having a market access of over two and a half billion people. The problem we have had is that our exports uh, have been to the traditional markets, USA, UK, a few countries in Europe, uh, and, uh, and India, but it, we need to now diversify the markets as well as diversify the products. So we are doing that together with the uh, ITC and with some assistance from World Economic Forum as well. So we believe that uh, within a year or so, we will be able to diversify our products as well as our markets. Uh, at the same time, what we lack is the know-how. So we believe that the know-how can come either through the diaspora or through FDIs. So it, it is of uh, primary importance for us to ensure uh, that the conditions are available in our country to attract the FDI. So together with the Minister of Finance, we are working on 
improving the ease of doing business indicators. Uh, we, uh, all the other areas where that had been looked into in that respect are being addressed. So I believe that within the, uh, this 2017 is a very crucial year for us. So all efforts will be made to ensure that the Prime Minister's vision and the President's vision will be carried out. Thank you very much. You mentioned your colleague, uh, the, the Finance Minister on the Cabinet. Uh, let's give him a chance to, uh, to elaborate. Um, obviously, this uh, sounds uh, like a lot of investments have to take place. Um, can you um, uh, brief us a little bit on uh, what Sri Lanka is doing in that field? Yes, as the Prime Minister said, the stage forward, we have basically <coughs> looked at as to how to take that into rapid growth orientation. We have looked at two areas. One is how we can lure the foreign direct investments to come into Sri Lanka and use the existing uh, manufacturers who are the best of ambassadors to improve and increase their existing uh, investments in the country. So it's a two-pronged attack which has been done. And as the Minister of uh, Sustainable Development mentioned, it's a product diversification and market diversification which will help us to increase the exports which dramatically reduced over the last 10 years. So the perilous economy that we inherited when the new government came in has somewhat been brought under control or into strict um, uh, policies that our Prime Minister has wanted us to adhere. And today we are on a right course where the fiscal consolidation is coming in. We are ensuring financial discipline is coming in and ensuring that the capital investment goes in for revenues of tomorrow. So I guess overall, we 2017 is a very important one, but it's a rolling year for the next three years as well. So it is our intention to ensure that we get in cheap capital to ensure that we have a sustainable growth in the next couple of years. Thank you, Minister. And last but definitely not least, Minister Fernando, which role will uh, digital infrastructure and telecommunications play uh, play out in this plan? Well, uh, as Minister Finance Minister just mentioned, 2016 was an year that we formulated the policy for digital economy in Sri Lanka. What we realized was uh, we mapped out what we wanted to do for the next five years. Uh, one thing we realized was we wanted to target seven areas was one was digital connectivity and we wanted to have a national digital identity for every citizen uh, plus to have a national payment platform for every citizen as well to connect also uh, the government to be on one platform so everybody could connect uh, digital security digital legislation and digital education for everybody so these are the seven pillars that we wanted to concentrate and work along uh, that's what what we started and i think 2017 will be the year where we will start to roll out everything uh, from the first three months itself Plus that, and I think even the World Economic Forum, one thing that we started to initiate was uh, the digital economy in South Asia as a group to initiate programs. And I think we started at the end of uh, March, we will have a roundtable conference with the South Asian group to start moving as a group as South Asia to move forward for a digital economy society as well. So I think that's what we are going to do. Thank you very much. Um, now Davos brings, uh, brings together um, representatives of the public sector uh, and, and of the civil society, be, but also there are 1,200 CEOs here um, in Davos. So what's your message to, to, to these CEOs that are coming here together in Davos? Um, uh, wh what's the message you're giving them to, to invest and, and come to Sri Lanka? First is that in Asia, uh, free trade, and globalization policies are going ahead. This is the expanding market. Asia will be going to be the largest market. The fastest growing region is South Asia, and within it, the Sri Lanka is going to be one of the attractive investments. So come here and have a look at it. Thank you, Prime Minister. So against the backdrop of skepticism about global integration and trade, we hear a very optimistic and positive message here. I think uh, that is very welcome to, to many here in, in Davos. Um, let's get a sense from the room um, if we have any questions um, to the gentleman here on the panel. Um, uh, please uh, wait for the microphone. Can we get the microphone to the gentleman in the first uh, row, please? Thank you. I'm Zaki Jaba from the Island Newspaper, Sri Lanka. Uh, Prime Minister, now China is, has committed, they said they would invest $5 billion within the next uh, five years. What are the other areas from where you're expecting investments, big investments? 
But India will be investing. We are discussing that further with India. Uh, there will be Japanese investments coming in. We hope there will be Korean investments coming in, but the uncertain political situation in Korea at the moment is not uh, conducive for any investment promotion. Singapore, there will be from other countries also. Uh, and then we feel even uh, the European investments will come in. It's a process, so let's start with what we have. Hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. You want to add to what the Prime Minister just said? Yes, if I may say that uh, our aim is to make Sri Lanka an industrial uh, and logistic hub. So it can't be business as usual approach that uh, it takes too long and uh, because of the policies that had been adopted earlier, we, reali we realize that we've been left behind. When you look at the countries in our region, we, we are far behind. So it can't be a business as usual approach. We got to leapfrog. So in that respect, uh, the input from organizations like the World Economic Forum is most welcome. So we have to work together to see how we can catch up and uh, get on par with some of the other countries in our region who has made a rapid progress. Thank you very much. If I may add on, only one thing that I could say is that Sri Lanka should be not looked at per se or is 23 million people. But the market access that we have owing to the free trade agreements we have with India, Pakistan, and with the impending China, Singapore, free trade zones that are coming in, free trade agreements that are coming in, that is a, a capturing source where from Sri Lanka you can penetrate into those markets. So that's the opportunity that we are opening up. And with the new vision that is unfolded by the Prime Minister and the President, I think it is the best time because being left behind has also opportunity to gain. We leapfrog into the new technology and able to ensure that we provide something which the others are unable because most of our peer countries have been a spend force now investments in that area become expensive. So we have become uh, probably a competitive production base that can export to the markets that are And the tax incentives will be given so that they will be basically able to take advantage of the location as well as financially placed from other countries that they have been investing to date. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any more questions from the floor? OK, one more question from the gentleman in the front. Do you expect the infrastructure to be in place to attract these investments? You can answer. Some it is in place already. Yeah. The Hambatata port, it's a matter of getting the equipment. The port is in place. Uh, the equipment, like gantry cranes and so on, all had to be brought in. Uh, we are confident that within six months, the port will be able to take off. Uh, similarly, the expressways are being, uh, or it's already been uh, uh, in progress. The expressway to Hambantota will also be ready in two and a half to three years time. The expressway to Kandy uh, will also be uh, commissioned in three years time. So most of these other work is being done. As far as the Western region is concerned, uh, we know that uh, the light rail, uh, there's a program to have light rail uh, for mass communication elevated highways and so on. So all these, uh, the requests for proposals have been called and uh, I believe that in the next two, three years, we will have these in place. Thank you very much. I must also add, if yes. I may, that uh, like President Xi Jinping mentioned this morning, uh, people have a lot of fear when changes take place. But these are the challenges that we have to face. Mm. And, I'm, uh, and we are very confident under the leadership of uh, President Sirisena and Honorable Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe that we will, we will be able to meet these challenges and ensure that our people will have a better life in the near future itself. Thank you very much. And um, if, you, if you're watching this and you are an, an expat from Sri Lanka, you heard the call, uh, come back and uh, support your country. Uh, you're, you're welcome and you're needed there. I think that's, that's important as well, not just a message to the CEOs, but also to uh, the people all over the world. So um, if we don't have any more questions and mindful of the tight schedule of the gentlemen on the panel, it's uh, 
my task now to conclude this press conference. Thank you very much for being here in the room and thank you for joining online. And a special thank you, of course, to the Prime Minister and his cabinet members. Thank you very much.